Hey everybody, how's it going? So a lot of you have been emailing me this tweet and asking what I think of it. It says, now confirmed, Apple is rejecting apps with irrationally high prices for in-apps and subscriptions. You have to explain why you are charging something like $7.99 a week because of using third-party paid services or something similar. Thanks, ASORID, for the screenshot. This is an interesting email here. So it says, hello. Thank you for your message and for your efforts to resolve this issue. App Store Review Guideline 3. Business states that while pricing is up to you, we won't distribute apps and in-app purchase items that are clear rip-offs. We'll reject expensive apps that try to cheat users with irrationally high prices. We continue to find that the user is charged an irrationally high price for the content and services available in your app. The costs associated with in-app purchases should reflect the value the user receives for their purchase. Specifically, the prices for the following items are irrationally high, and it is a bit uh, jumbled out there, so I don't know exactly what it was. Please note that the App Store review cannot make specific recommendations on the price for your app or digital goods for sale on your app. We look forward to reviewing your app once the appropriate changes have been made. So, what Apple is doing here is they are defining... What is a clear ripoff? They are not saying that this is subjective. They are not saying that it is up to you, the user, to decide what it is you want to spend money on. They are the authority on what is a ripoff. The company that made a $300 coffee table book that has pictures of their products is saying what is a ripoff. The company that had made a, an iMac, which is $1,300 in 2019, and still comes with a 5,400 RPM hard drive, is defining what is a ripoff. The company that in 2016 and 17 make a laptop that you cannot open or close, because when you open or close it, the backlight will die, as I demonstrated there in this video over here, actually managed to make a machine that if you open and close it enough times, it dies due to the fact that the cable that they used was too short. Now, with this machine, they actually fixed this problem in 2018. They made the cable longer, very clear problem, but they're only covering you if you have a 2016 machine. Many people with the USB-C MacBook Pros may know this. You open it like this, it works. You open it like this, you have no backlight. Now, they are not covering the 2017 15-inch or the 2017 13-inch, which have the exact same design. They're only covering the 2016 13-inch because they really care about not ripping their customers off. See, if someone is charging $8 a week for a feature in their app, that's a ripoff. If you sell a computer for $3,000 that you literally can't open and close after one year, well, that, that's just business. We're talking about the company that charges $699 for wheels on a desktop computer, saying that how much you're gonna charge for an in-app service, well, that's a ripoff. We need to protect our customers from that. We're talking about a company that made a machine back in 2016 that could not connect to the $1,000 phone you could purchase from that same company without spending $60 to $70 in a dongle. Now, remember, I did a video on this back in 2016 where I tried a third-party dongle with the MacBook Pro and it did not work. I could use that dongle just fine on a Dell XPS, but I couldn't use the $30 dongle on the MacBook. I needed to use the OEM dongle that at the time was going for, I think, 60 to 70 bucks and had one or two stars on Apple's website. And I want to be clear here. I really want to be clear. I am not trying to, uh, to bash Apple. I'm not trying. Same way that when I bench press the bar at the gym, it's like I'm not trying to put the bar up. It's just too easy. This is silly. You have a company that there are many good arguments to be made is ripping off its customers, whether through having extraordinarily high prices for standard goods and services or through just outright selling shit that doesn't work and not covering the customer after the one year warranty period is up, even though they paid $4,000 for a premium device that should be expected as a laptop to be opened and closed. And it really does beg the question, who should be defining ripoffs? There are people that think that it's absolutely ridiculous that I pay for Bloomberg News. I actually pay for some other news outlets as well because I appreciate getting hard journalism. I may not always agree with what I read. I may not always think it's perfectly sourced, but I do want people that actually do go out there into the world and try to figure out what's going on to be able to get paid for it. Uh, there are many things that I pay for that other people would think are a complete ripoff. I have a set of Vandersteen speakers here that I paid about thirteen or $1,700 for a few years ago. Lots of people uh, think that's a ripoff. I can get a set of floor-standing speakers on Craigslist for two or $300. I can't hear the difference. So you know, th th 
this is a subjective thing, and I really find it particularly strange that a company that is known for selling products at premium pricing is taking it upon themselves to say what is and is not a ripoff rather than letting users decide that for themselves. And don't get me wrong, I really do appreciate that Apple tries to protect user privacy and from companies like Facebook in ways that other companies don't. I appreciate that they, that they do try to protect the user from predatory companies and, uh, and predatory tracking and predatory data mining shit. But is it really their place? Place to protect you from paying for something inside of an application when that's your choice. So when it comes to data mining, you you didn't read the 900-page EULA for the app that you're using. Let's just face it. And even if you did, you probably wouldn't be able to understand exactly what it is they're doing with all of your data. But when you see a price inside of an application for an in-app purchase, you know what it is. If they say it's $8 a week for this, it's $20 a week for this, it's $40 a week for that, it's $1,000 a week for access to Belle Delphine's bathwater or something, you see the price, you know what that number means, and then you know what you're getting. Now, if they're not giving you what you're asking for, then I could see the app store coming in and saying, okay, users are saying that you're not providing them what they paid for, they could step in. But for them to step in and say, hey, I could see that you're providing what the user paid for. It's our personal opinion that that's too much money. When you're a company that charges $300 for a coffee table book and over $600 for wheels, get the fuck out of here. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.